watch if I have a chance of getting my Nat King. Who is this person? I did a public call out on social media to my male friends and asked them what they thought about chick flicks. Whether there was any that they particularly liked or didn't like, whether they liked them as a genre or whether they thought they were trash. I legitimately enjoy most fun chick flicks or rom-coms but I honestly prefer calling them rom-coms because chick flicks feels inherently less deserving of attention for no reason. I find I enjoy them the same as any other genre. It has ones I like and ones I don't. Men flatly stating they dislike them is probably the other thing that's drummed into them from school onwards boys like action movies, not chick flicks. These movies are about relationships and romance, both things that men desire, so why are we taught that liking them makes us weak? That is a very good question, my friend. My name is Sarah and I am a Glasgow-based writer, filmmaker, and lover of female-led stories. There's something that's just unspoken around cinema culture that men do not like chick flicks. But now that I'm thinking about this, I wonder if that's even true. So I guess the question is, is it true? Is there something about these movies that men will inherently not like across the board? And if that's so, why? Especially since there's no female equivalent. There doesn't seem to be a genre that specifically excludes women watchers. Women enjoy crime films, war films, and films that traditionally star male leads. I guess there's porn. That shit is not made with women in mind. Here, if we get chick flicks and they get porn, that is an unfair trade-off. I want to look at this in depth and figure out why this is a cultural assumption. So, I'm going to look at three films from the early 2000s that I specifically remember being favourites of mine when I was first becoming a person. Legally Blonde, Miss Congeniality, and the classic Mean Girls. Not just the films themselves, but the culture around them, the way they are presented to the world, the way we're given to the world are through their marketing, their trailers, and other things around them before anyone actually gets to sit and watch the films. Perception is everything. Let's start with Miss Congeniality. If you haven't seen it, watch it. In a nutshell, it's about a female FBI agent who goes undercover at the Miss United States pageant because of threats of terrorism. She is someone who doesn't adhere to conventional beauty standards and doesn't take care of her physical appearance as much as the average beauty queen would. So it is a challenge for her to fit in amongst these women while trying to do her job as well. Miss Congeniality tagline. Unpolished, unkempt, unleashed, undercover. Unimpressive. She's got a killer to catch right after the swimsuit competition. Never mess with an agent in a dress. Never mess with an agent, they have guns. What I find it really strange around all the kind of surrounding marketing is just how much emphasis is put on Sandra Bullock's character's physical appearance. You do a few butt shaping exercises, you tighten this up, you can pull this off. You know what, pull this off. I have so many problems with this. And even though that is a challenge that she has to overcome in the film, that's absolutely not the key message that I got when I was younger. The character of Gracie Hart self-professes that she is a feminist and she doesn't want to parade around like an airheaded bimbo. She doesn't want to sacrifice her fight for equality in order to fit in with that. And she ends up making great friends and they don't just become these airheaded bimbos anymore, they become colleagues. And she realizes that feminism is for everyone. It's not just for the women who shrug off all of their femininity because they think it is a, a systematic form of oppression that is handed down by the patriarchy. Either way, the way it's presented in the trailer that the only thing standing between Gracie Hart and success is a hairbrush is completely underselling the emotional arc of the film. Moving on to Legally Blonde. If you haven't seen it, watch it. So a college senior who is also the president of a sorority from California is broken up with by her East Coast boyfriend who is going back to try and and pursue his real life now that graduation's over at Harvard Law School and he wants a more serious partner to share his life with. Completely devastated, the lovely Elle Woods decides to prove that she is worthy of this guy's love and respect by proving that she can get into and succeed at Harvard Law School as well. This summer, go blonde. Makes it sound like it's about hairdressing. Don't judge a book by its hair color. Oh no, that one I actually like, that's good. Believing in yourself never goes out of style. That's it. That's good. The marketing around Legally Blonde is extremely simplistic. It takes the visual gag that what Elle Woods looks like, so her blonde hair and pink skimpy dresses, and puts it in the kind of Harvard aesthetic. It doesn't really go together. And that is what everything just hangs on. Got a PhD from Berkeley. MBA from Wharton. I've been deworming orphans in Somalia. Two weeks ago, I saw Cameron Diaz at Fred Siegel, and I talked her out of buying this truly heinous Angora sweater. In the 
Legally Blonde trailer, they show a very condensed version of the scene where she actually applies for Harvard, only they cut out absolutely everything that says that she is qualified to go there. She's president of her sorority, she has a 4.0 grade, grade average, she has lots of um, activism work. All they show is her saying, I object when she gets pinched in the street and a room full of creepy white guys on the admissions team looking at her and saying, aren't we looking for diversity? It's pretty much saying right away that this woman has nothing to offer but her sex appeal, so much so that she gets into Harvard Law School with nothing but that, which isn't true. The complete opposite is actively what the film is about, so why are you presenting it that way? What, like it's hard? Very similar to the Miss Congeniality trailer, it seems to miss the point entirely of the film and kind of go in the other direction. Finally moving on to Mean Girls. If you haven't seen it, watch it. The most quotable film on the planet. Don't have sex, because you will get pregnant and die. Put it in a nutshell, it's about a student who's coming to a high school for the first time because she spent her entire education being homeschooled while she's lived in Africa. So she has absolutely no social context for what the cliques and the cliches that happen in a high school. This should be hilarious. Mean girls tagline. Welcome to girl world. That's a bit unimaginative. Watch your back, they're your friends. What does that even mean? Beware of the plastics. Like, where? Like, in the ocean? The thing I love most about Mean Girls is that because of Katie, we can actually see what the American traditional narrative for high school girls is. She looks at it and goes, this is ridiculous, which is great, because I think what the underlying message is, is that female friendships are extremely important and two, the stereotypes for teenage girls are damaging and more often than not wrong. More than anything, it's a satire, which I think is what gets overlooked, especially in the trailer. This is the trailer I found the most interesting out of all of them because of the way it opens. It opens with a racist joke. She just moved here from Africa. Welcome. I'm from Michigan. Great. Why? Why would you do that? So many quotes in that film, you couldn't have found a better one to open with? I think it's trying to set the expectations for what the film is, but that kind of discredits anything else that's gonna come after it, doesn't it? I find this trailer the most problematic because it does its absolute best to sell itself as every other American high school teen movie ever. And this is kind of the anti-teen movie as well, which I guess is fine up until the point when you realize that you're leaning so heavily into the stereotypes that you're trying to prove that they're ridiculous, but in the trailer they're selling them like like it's actually okay. Pretty much put it simply, all the trailer says and the marketing around it is that women are animals. I mean, that's just like the rules of feminism. And when you're a teenager going to see a film like that for the first time, exploring cinema for the first time and seeing these kind of narratives presented to yourself as this is what your norm is, don't you start to internalize those messages? That you cannot have normal female friendships in high schools without stepping on a landmine every two seconds? So here's a question, why does everything about the marketing of these films, the trailers, the log lines, the way they are presented to the world before you actually get to see them. Why does none of that actually reflect what I pulled as the essential story from these three films? Why is that message not being articulated instead of being passed off as these fluffy, funny, oh look at girls being silly films that they appear in their original trailers? Another thing to remember is that these films that I've mentioned actually do tackle very serious issues for women. There is sexual assault in Legally Blonde. There is terrorism and miscongeniality, but the trailers present themselves as all comedy, all lighthearted, all funny, and completely ignore any of those serious undertones. They would never present themselves in a way as taking themselves too seriously. However, when you watch action films, they absolutely take themselves too seriously. Are these films embarrassed of themselves? You know when you meet someone new and they ask to see like a back catalog of your work just to kind of get to know you and then you remember that so many films you made like way back in the day are really terrible and you'd actually rather eat a bowl of thumbtacks than show them anything of your work because you're so embarrassed of the creative that you used to be and you've grown now and everything think is better now. See my entire bag catalog. That's the kind of level of embarrassment I think these films are presenting themselves when they're coming out new. They're kind of almost apologizing for themselves, trying to present themselves as worse than they are in case anyone calls them that. Basically what I think needs to happen is that these films need to stop apologizing for being female-led. 
What, like a tar? The narratives of these films challenge stereotypes, but you would not believe that at all just by looking at the trailer, the log lines, even things like the um, the DVD covers and the movie posters. There are absolutely moments in all three films that men would enjoy. I know many guys who would say that Mean Girls is one of their favourite films. It is still the most quotable years after it has been made. So why are we presented with this idea that men will not enjoy them. From what I can gather from all the responses that came from my male friends when I did a call out online is that men do not hate chick flicks. It is the term chick flicks that is problematic. What they think that chick flicks are are genuinely just romantic comedies but with that that name, that marketing, that branding, that culture around them that is meant to say very specifically, men, you have nothing here, this is trash and it's not for you. That is not what the experience of the people who are watching these films are getting when they come out of it. They are genuinely really enjoying it. So where is the problem coming from? Is it coming from men in general? No, it's not. It's coming from the fact that these films are being marketed and presented to us as something that makes us believe that if you enjoy these things you're stupid or you're dumb or you're lesser or you don't have an appreciation of cinema or storytelling. It's those kind of generalizations that foster a culture that is genuinely damaging. If you say that men don't like chick flicks and you teach boys that they should be avoiding these films, they are cutting themselves off actively from women's stories, which is not great. Think about the 2019 film Booksmart, a story about two girls in high school who spent too much time studying and decided to go on this one last bingy hurrah um, just before gra the night before graduation and it goes horribly wrong. That film is beyond silly, but when you look at the marketing, it takes itself extremely seriously. It never at any point apologises for the way that it's going to tell the story of two women speaking to each other. It never puts itself forward as a fluffy high school drama because it's not. It is a valid story, it knows it's a valid story, and articulating that makes all the difference. No one has ever called Booksmart a chick flick, and the way that the marketing and the trailers and everything was presented about that film makes all the difference in its perception. Perception is everything. If we get rid of the term chick flick, it opens up so many new opportunities for women in cinema, opportunities for these stories to be told, but also opportunities for male audiences to go and enjoy these films. Because as you've seen from the comments and the call out and everything I've said before, they do enjoy them. Do yourselves a favour, watch these films. They are so fetch.